this is Kyle again from Mantic to bring you the second rules preview for the Twilight Kin as we head closer and closer to that launch. This time, we're going to take a look at the Void Touched units that are available in the Twilight Kin list. The Void Touch keyword represents the Twilight Kin who have been exposed to the Void for a little too long, and they've exchanged their physical forms for power. And the first unit that I want to highlight are the Void Touched Weavers. This is a magical ranged infantry option, and this is really kind of different. We haven't seen this in Kings of War before, but they sacrifice, you know, having standard ranged attacks such as bows or crossbows in exchange for magical ranged attacks. So the Weavers get access to either Cosmic Fire or Void Bolts. You have to choose which one you're going to take when you're building your list. Cosmic Fire is a standard fireball attack, which obviously gets shattering and that sort of thing, and has a decent number of shots that are built into it. It's also a free upgrade, and I think that this pairs extremely well with things like the Ravagers in the list to have a really nice speed six mobile shooting platform unit or wing in your army. The other option is the Void Bolts, which is definitely more powerful, but you're going to pay for it. 15 or 25 points for the troop or regiment respectively to get access to Lightning Bolt on a unit. So this obviously gives you the benefit of not having the penalty of moving and shooting, but you do still suffer the penalty for Spell Ward. So essentially, if you're going up against things like halflings, you're going to have a rough time. If you're going up against Night Stalkers and the story that we were trying to tell with the Twilight Kin dominating the Night Stalkers, stealthy doesn't matter. So there's a lot of opportunity here to kind of have some counterplay in your lists and take advantage of these various types of attacks. Be careful, though, that nerve gap is pretty high and you sort of have to babysit these guys. They are very susceptible to counter shooting and can be wavered very easily. Next are the melee variant, the Void Touched Mutants. This is a heavy infantry unit that really represents kind of how a cavalry unit would appear in the Twilight Kin list. Heavy infantry is the exact same base profile as what a cavalry would be, and when we were thinking about the rules for these, it was heavily inspired by what cavalry would be. So you've got a ton of attacks built into a high-speed melee 3-plus unit that has Elite, Strider, Thunderous 2, and Wild Charge. So lots of speed, lots of guaranteed delivery offensiveness with things like Strider, and Phalanx doesn't work against them because they're heavy infantry. So it's a really interesting twist on things. They are going to be able to get to their target and apply a ton of damage to them. When you look, they have the Twilight Elf and Void Touch keyword, which means they can benefit from Vicious from something like the Navigator and any of the other Void Touch bonuses. So this is an extremely offensive glass hammer kind of unit that is going to deliver its payload one way or another. Again, watch out for that nerve gap. It's at least three points. So it's something that you have to be careful of because if they get wavered, they are not doing what you want them to do. So take good care of them, support them with chaff and deliver those attacks into the unit that you need them to and it's going to go away. Next, of course, are the Impalers. These are the elves that have been exposed to the Void, but have been able to control those energies and utilize them in, in devastating ways. So they are swollen, monstrous infantry, huge model pieces. They're a little bit slower at speed 5, but they still keep that melee 3 plus. The thing that is really appealing about them is obviously the big shield and the fearless nerve level. So at the regiment, I think that this is an incredible thick chaff unit at 135 points with defense six in the front, thanks to big shield. This is an extremely difficult unit to get off of the table. You can use this to screen your other units thanks to it being height three, but you are paying the penalty by them being slightly slower with speed five. So you have to be careful. At the horde level, 18 attacks, the full thing built into it. That's where you really get advantage of elite and rerolling those ones. And then wild chart is there to essentially be able to ensure that you're not totally slow but the crushing strength build in means that if you want these guys to be a hammer in the list, you can technically build them out to be that way, especially with the right support. I tested them with things like the Brew of Sharpness, and oh man, is that nasty. When you get on top of them with things like the Aura of Vicious from the Navigator, then all of a sudden it gets even worse throwing on things like a Bane Chant to make them crushing two, and this is a very stout unit. What's great is that they can both be Hammer or Anvil, so it really is a highlight of the list, something that's extremely flexible, it unlocks and gives you a lot of options on how to build everything else out, but it's a staple, it's a centerpiece, and I think it's an extremely important part of the Twilight Kin army. Now, while this next unit doesn't have the Void Touched keyword, I think it fits in best here when we're going over the previews. That's the Gordrake. This is a titan piece that is a monster that comes from the void 
and it reminds me a lot of a beast of nature profile having seven attacks hitting on threes crush two fly nimble strider speed eight that means that you're going to get this thing exactly where you need it to be what's special about it and what sort of reminisces from the early days of the design process for the twilight kin was the void charged beast rule this was something that we played around with giving all of the twilight kin an early point where they could re-roll a certain number of dice that failed to hit not just elite we decided to tone it back and keep it a little bit more simple. Elite makes sense, but we wanted to pay homage to what that rule originally was and put it on one unit still. And it comes on the Gorge Rake. With seven attacks and getting to reroll three of the dice that failed to hit, that's almost half of its attacks that you get to reroll at a guaranteed rate. That means that you've really got a very good chance of delivering the payload of those seven attacks, and it starts to shift those math hammer numbers. You know, or at least you have a really good idea of exactly how much damage this is going to do when it goes into just a front. So that becomes incredibly helpful if you want to use this as a support combat piece, something that can push you over the edge to get you to break the nerve of the unit that you're trying trying to break. So really exciting in that sense. Being height six and speed eight means that if you want to use this as a flank attacker, you absolutely can. And it's a great piece to have for a lot of different roles. Leading the Impalers is the Impaler Soulbane. This is a hero on a monster sized base. And at speed five, it is definitely slow, but it delivers a nasty amount of attacks once it does get into combat. You do get access to wild charge, but with Nimble and that smaller base size at nine attacks with Elite, with three up on Crush 2, it also inspires and Nimble. It's just that perfect complement. Being dash 15 means that you don't have to worry about him getting wavered. He's going to find a way to get into combat and he can threaten flanks and be a really surprising piece. For only 150 points, this thing is going to be able to support in a variety of different ways, especially offensively. It's a great second line attacker, and the fact that it's on a monster base means that it has a unit strength and it can still score at the end of the game. So a great offensive potential to throw out a number of different things. It's got the Twilight Elf and Void Touched keywords, which means you get to take advantage of a number of different things. Stealthy becomes very important from the Navigator if you want to throw that out thanks to the Void Touched, because only at Defense 4 he can and become a target so you have to be careful but I think this thing is really gross uh, it's not quite the level of what you know a Lord on Frostfang would be but man nine attacks hitting on threes of elite that's that's just good stuff right there and of course we have to take a look at the summoner crone the summoner crone is the spellcaster extraordinaire for the twilight kin and you'll notice something really critical here it doesn't come with spells based into the profile so at 55 points there are no spells that come with it at default this is a change that's going to apply to all factions come time for Clash of Kings, but the Twilight can get first crack at it. We get to see exactly what that looks like. So you get to choose and build the spellcaster exactly as you need. That way there's no spells that you're paying points for that you don't necessarily want to use. And the really cool thing about the Summoner Crone is that Wicked Miasma. With this, when you roll to hit with Enthrall, Hex, Weakness, or Windblast, you get to roll to damage for each hit that you scored with a Piercing 1 modifier. This complements extremely well with things like the Weavers, where if you want to throw out ranged attacks with the Summoner Crone, you can definitely do that. Add in a Mind Screech, and all of a sudden, you've got a lot of long-range piercing attacks. The, all those spells that are available for it have access to, you know, essentially detrimental effects that can go into the army. So things like Enthrall, if you want to push and pull your uh, opponent around, Windblast, etc., or Hexing an enemy spellcaster, those are great ways to take advantage of this sort of thing. My favorite, though, has to be Weakness on it. If you use Weakness in combination with a lower defense than the Twilight Kin, things like the Blood Hex where you can increase defense, there's a lot of great survivability that you can use and still be offensive while you're trying to do it. So it's a really interesting take. I think the Summoner Crone is a staple in the list. And obviously with those abilities that you have there, it can do a number of different things. The spells are there for your choice to choose exactly how you want to build this thing out and take advantage of the different rules that are there. Last up is the Mac Daddy Mikhail, the Lord of Nightmares himself. This is a fantastic iteration of this classic living legend in Kings of War. I think this is probably the best place where his rules have been. If you don't remember his prior rules, they've been absolutely crazy over the years, and this is a really solid place to be. So he is a large cav hero on a 50 mil base at height 4, which is great. Speed 8, defense 5, with iron resolve means he's got a lot of survivability. That dash 17 nerve means he's going to be, you know, it's tough to take him off the table. 
very inspiring and dread means that if you want to help support in the early turns and then go throw dread into a combat in the later turns it's a great way to do it but then of course the sword of umbra comes into play this is where he gets slayer with also attacking against heroes monsters and titans which is a classic and iconic look at how the sword of umbra has worked in the past a flat slayer three at that so those nine attacks go to 12 meaning that if you get into the flank of a titan he's hitting at 24 attacks with elite on threes and crush two with dread oh that is gross so he is just a great great centerpiece for the twilight kin he really is one of the big bads in the world of panathor and man what a profile to have him come out of the gate with and lead your force he is 100 percent in my list and i will be taking him every time so that is it for the Twilight Kin Void Touched Rules Preview. They should also be on the Mantic Companion as of today, so go out there and check out the full list in all of its glory and get your own ideas going about how you want to build your Twilight Kin army going forward or how you're going to defend against them out there in the world of Panathor. So thanks for checking it out. We've got one more video on the Cronebound, the Night Stalker units that are in the list, and we'll talk about some even more synergies at that time because they're not just copies of the Night Stalker units. There's some other options that are there as well. So stay tuned for more. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon.